As soon as my power tower is finished, I must find a place to sign my name in very large letters. Hello and welcome to this review of Transformers Masterpiece, Grapple. I'm Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80, and I'll be clunk thumping my way through this video today to show you this brand new Takara Tomy product sponsored by In Demand Toys. Let's start with a quick background of the character. Despite having a name that sounds like a wrestler's energy drink, Grapple is an artistic architect that takes his work very seriously. Known for his works of art in designing and constructing Cybertronian buildings, Grapple had to dial it back in order to direct his efforts towards the Autobot Decepticon war effort, and in turn gets very depressed when his buildings are destroyed in battle. Someday I want to build something that doesn't get trashed. <laughs> he made a number of appearances in the G1 cartoon, but not before a character with a similar look and vehicle mode showed up in the original three-part miniseries named Hauler. Hauler! Hauler! It is widely accepted that this was a character that was intended to be Grapple, but the Hauler name was later retconned into the Transformers canon thanks to an eHobby exclusive redeco anyway. Identity theft aside, Grapple made his first appearance in the cartoon on the episode Dinobot Island Part 1, when he's seen hanging with the Autobots inside the Ark in front of Teletran 1. Voiced by Peter Renaday, his first major storyline was in the episode The Master Builder, not The Master Beta, and involved designing a solar power tower, going as far as making a model of the structure which comes with this masterpiece figure that was poo-pooed by Optimus Prime, leading Grapple to sulk right into the hands of the Constructicons, who tricked him into building the tower for them and the Decepticons. I know, what? We also get a glimpse of the buddy-buddy relationship between Grapple and Hoist, another character I'm looking forward to seeing in this line. No sign of him as yet, of course, just an Autobot on my want list. It's a long list. In fact, let me know what Autobots you want to see in the Masterpiece line going forward in the comments below this video. We'll do Decepticons another time. You may also notice that the cartoon version doesn't have his crane arm showing on his back, unlike the original toy. This was due to the character model being designed using only a front-facing reference image, leaving the designers to basically make up what his rear end looked like. The new Masterpiece toy follows the cartoon version very closely here by having the crane arm fold up and disappear into his back, not his arm. Another interesting cartoon slash toy anomaly was that of his hand slash wrist rockets. The toy had the ability to switch out his hands with projectile rockets on either side, and due to the reference image using one of each, the cartoon version ended up with a permanent left-handed rocket attachment, which sounds like my king style. The cartoon model also switched its use to a gun barrel and sometimes an arc welder instead of the originally described rockets in his toy bio. This will teach you to bomb my buildings. Also, his helmet was inconsistently coloured in both orange initially and then black in the episode Auto Berserk before switching back again later on. The black helmet was also seen in the original Autobot Cars Transformers commercial in 1985. He can be seen in the 1986 animated movie very briefly, helping to defend Autobot City. Did a shit job of that though, didn't he? Grapple also had a prominent role in the early Marvel comics and has been used at random and sparingly since in Dreamwave and IDW arcs. As you know by now, the original Transformers toys had all come from the Diaclone and Microman slash Microchange lines by Takara and Grapple was no exception. The number 20 truck crane was the basis for his first release in the US and was introduced in 1985 alongside smokescreen tracks Hoist, Inferno, Red Alert, Thrust and Dirge. Four of those I've covered previously. I will eventually do a throwback review on tracks when I get the chance, and Dirge is unreleased but coming soon. He had more than a passing resemblance to Inferno for obvious reasons. Both utilise the same Mitsubishi Fuso vehicle mode, and where Inferno had a retractable ladder, Grapple had a retractable crane arm. He had spring-loaded missile launches in both arms, a mechanism that was made far less powerful for the US release because America cared more about children's eyes for some weird reason. The same toy was released in the following year, and then again with a number of minor changes for the commemorative series 6 in 2004. We didn't get another grapple for a while after that, and when we did in 2011, it was under a slight name change, possibly due to a trademark issue. Hasbro released the Solar Storm Grapple with the grapple spelt G-R-A-P-P-E-L instead of the usual G-R-A-P-P-L-E. Once a child wants to spell, the spell is cast. 
speak and spell from Texas Instruments. That is correct. He was a redeco of Universe Inferno and was later used to make the Protector Bot Hotspot in 2014. The Japanese version of this toy came out a few weeks prior to the Solar Storm figure in the same year under the United toy line. He received a few slight deco changes including the orange head to better resemble his G1 cartoon appearances. A Creo grapple was included in the SDCC exclusive class of 1985 set in 2015, but that's about it. Not many toys at all for such a prominent member of the original canon, and I certainly won't mention the use of the grapple name for a Decepticon in the Armada line. <laughs> no siree, not a chance of that ha Ask Vector Prime about it. And now, finally, his incredibly striking masterpiece offering. And with that said, let's get stuck into his box. He looks great on the front, love the way these figures are presented. He has his black arm blaster and orange helmet head to best resemble the majority of his G1 cartoon appearances. He is MP35 and the Cybertron Architect. On the back, we have some great shots of his vehicle mode and the different accessories you can attach to the crane arm. There's the customary scale image with Prime and this time Wheeljack. We also see the bevy of robot mode accessories as well. Let's look inside. We have a grapple attachment, bucket attachment, arc welder rifle, his replacement grill, chrome blaster, screwdriver, black helmet, three extra face plates, Yelly, smirky and sensible. Solar power tower model, which is cute and has a separate spherical element that pops out and the solar panels move up and down. And of course, we have grapple in vehicle mode. We will come back to him as there is also the small matter of the paperwork. Cute little blueprints, or pink prints as I like to call them, for the solar power tower. A collector's card with some solid scores and two very rubbish ones. I will work those out in a sec when I look at the instructions and the instructions. Vehicle mode and stats, robot mode and scores, speed 3 and endurance 4, not the strongest or most dynamic of Autobots but he has his charm. The cartoon did make me think he was an idiot though. If the constructor cons can outwit you then you haven't got a chance in life I'm afraid. We can also see the features, arc welder rifle and where to stick it, <coughs> grapple and bucket attachments and where to stick them, <coughs> his solar power tower model and his tiny tool, <coughs> Stop it now. His screwdriver. Oh, oh no, not for that. Okay, fine. In vehicle mode, he is beautiful, and that colour is so nostalgia feels. I love the dull yellow and the black stripes for a simple but effective health and safety vibe. I always thought the character from the cartoon was a bit wet, but that didn't stop me enjoying the toy, and this version is just as cool. Now, you can pull the side pipes out and extend the legs to give stability when in crane mode, much like Inferno. We don't have the hoses that we saw on the Cybertron Search and Rescue Specialist, and of course the crane arm is different. You can attach the articulated grapple or bucket onto the arm like so, but I tend to stick with the hook because I'm Mr. Default. The arm extends beyond the cab and can be depressed quite far back. The only issue I have with him is that the crane arm only extends to a certain height on a piston arm and won't rotate sideways, which seems crazy to not have that. I'm guessing some function had to be sacrificed for the fold-up crane arm to be hidden for that G1 animation accuracy. It would have been amazing if they had somehow figured out a way to have the hook on a retractable winch too with a cable, but the engineering on that would be bordering on Cybertronian technology. Other than that, the vehicle is beautiful and I'm totally down for Snapple Apple Grapple. You can also hide his arc welder rifle under the crane arm and flip the panel on the roof of the cab to attach it in there like some kind of mental truck tank. So as a crane truck, he is pretty super awesome times. Let's see what his robot mode is all about. Autobots, transform and roll out! Okay, so Grapple is basically Inferno at his core with a different deco and some retooling. I love Inferno and he even made it into my top 10 of 2016 toys, so I have to love Grapple, right? Right? 
Well, actually, I do. The retooling goes a long way to differentiate the characters, and the colour is so awesome. If you have seen any of the videos I have ever made for Generals Joes, or even listened to the Full Force podcast at any point, which would only be about six of you, then you would know how much of a sucker I am for repaints. I love any little homage to obscurities, and for Grapple we have that in abundance. His solar power tower accessory is cute, and if you hadn't seen the Master Builder episode then you would probably be scratching your heads when you saw the item and its blue slash pink prints in this release. The screwdriver is cute and is seen in the same episode, the black helmet and the different crane arm attachments were used in Auto Berserk, and the various faceplates are included for both the cartoon and original toy accuracy. Even the grill and blaster replacements go towards making this a really cool addition to the Autobot ranks, and goes to show you that the people that work on these toys are passionate and committed fans themselves. These little touches are often more rewarding than the actual figure itself, but that might just be me. Anywho, he is well balanced, looks beautiful, straightforward transformation, and by straightforward I mean having easily understandable instructions. The process is still complicated, just better explained than most. You can hide his screwdriver in his right forearm like so, and he can hold it as if it were a drumstick in the 1920s. On his left hand you can choose whether he has the blaster or hand, and even switch the black for the chrome blaster depending on your preference. He holds his arc welder rifle like so, the grills switch out very easily, and he can pretend to hold the tower thanks to a peg that slots into his wrist. He can also hold the blue slash pink prints just like in the cartoon, so you can recreate that 4 seconds of screen time forever. You can also attach the arc welder rifle to his ass if you really want to, so that you can carry as much of his gear as possible. I have no issues with his robot mode at all. Super solid and great to pose. He is awesome. I love this guy so much. As with the majority of these figures, there always seems to be a number of characters that can use a single mould, and this figure is no exception. As well as Inferno and Grapple, we will be getting Artfire very soon, which is pretty cool, and they could always make a green version of Grapple specifically as an e-hobby hauler homage. I would be down for that, so hurry up, yeah? Overall, I'm totally loving this figure. Grapple has enough differences in build and deco to separate himself from Inferno, and is just fantastic to look and play with. Yeah, I said it, f***ing play with, alright? My only issue is with the lack of sideways rotation in the crane arm, but hey ho, get over yourself, d If you want one, go and visit www.idtoys.co.uk and order from their site. Alternatively, you can find us at a number of shows throughout the year, or even, perish the thought, visit the shop at the Dixon Shopping Centre in Norwich on the Reef and Road. Nick and Mass love to grapple, so feel free to challenge them to a table ladders and chairs match in store, and they will gladly send security to have you removed from the premises. Thanks for watching this review, and be sure to catch me doing this again very soon for many more Masterpiece figures. And a special thank you to the Space Bridge for providing some of the video footage for today's review. Make sure you visit their page by searching at the Space Bridge on Facebook. I have been Chris McLeod, and you have been watching this video with the volume down because you hate my voice. Well, f you, even though you won't hear that.